students, welcome to your science class. Today, we continue the exciting journey of water. In our last class, we saw how water changes into vapor through evaporation. But what happens next? Have you ever wondered how clouds form or where rain comes from? Well, get ready, because in this video, we're going to explore condensation and the amazing journey of water through the water cycle. Let's take a closer look at condensation. Condensation is the process where water vapor in the air cools down and changes back into tiny droplets of liquid water. It's the opposite of evaporation. Instead of gaining heat and turning into gas, here, water vapor loses heat and becomes liquid. But there's something else that plays an important role, and that is humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the air. The higher the humidity, the more moisture the air holds. When humid air, full of water vapor, comes into contact with a cool surface, it loses heat and the water vapor condenses. That's why on a humid day, you might see fog forming near the ground, water droplets on the outside of a cold glass, or even feel sweaty and sticky because sweat doesn't evaporate easily when the air is already full of moisture. Also, in nature, when warm, humid air rises up and cools, the water vapor condenses around dust particles to form tiny droplets. And that's how clouds are born. So, condensation needs two things, water vapor or humidity, and cooling of that vapor. Without both, condensation won't happen. This simple process plays a huge role in bringing rain, forming clouds, and keeping the water cycle moving. So far, we learned that condensation turns water vapor into tiny droplets, and that's exactly how clouds begin to form. Let's now understand this process a little more deeply. It all starts when the sun heats up water in oceans, rivers, lakes, even from the leaves of plants. This heat causes water to evaporate and rise up as water vapor into the atmosphere. As the vapor goes higher, the air around it becomes cooler and cooler. At a certain height, the temperature drops low enough for the vapor to lose heat and condense. But condensation alone doesn't create clouds. The water droplets need a surface to stick to, and in the sky, that surface is usually tiny dust particles or smoke particles floating in the air. So, the condensed water droplets cling to these particles and group together to form clouds. Now, these clouds might look light and fluffy, but as more and more water collects inside them, the droplets grow larger and heavier. And finally, when they become too heavy to stay up, they fall back to earth as rain, snow, or hail. This falling of water from clouds is what we call precipitation. So yes, evaporation sends water up, condensation forms clouds, and precipitation brings the water back down. This amazing cycle repeats every day, quietly working above us. Let's now understand the water cycle, the continuous journey of water through evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. It keeps water moving all around us, in the air, on land, and in oceans. Let's go through the steps one by one. The first step is evaporation. When the sun heats up water in oceans, lakes, rivers, or even small puddles, the water changes into vapor and rises into the air. The second step is condensation. As the water vapor rises higher, it cools down in the upper atmosphere. It condenses into tiny droplets that come together to form clouds. The third step is 
precipitation. As the droplets inside clouds grow larger and heavier, they eventually fall back to Earth as rain, snow, or hail. This is called precipitation. And the fourth step is collection. The water that falls collects in rivers, lakes, ponds, and oceans. Some of it even seeps into the ground and becomes groundwater. And once again, with the help of the sun, the water evaporates, and the cycle starts all over again. So remember, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. These four steps keep the water cycle moving, balancing Earth's water, and supporting all forms of life. The water cycle isn't just a science topic. It's something that affects our lives every single day. Farmers depend on rainfall to grow crops and feed millions of people. Without the water cycle, we wouldn't have regular rain, and that means no food. In many places, people use rainwater harvesting. They collect and store rainwater during the monsoon so they can use it during dry months. In cities, understanding the water cycle helps engineers build better drainage systems to prevent floods and manage water flow during heavy rains. And most importantly, the water cycle helps control Earth's temperature, distributes fresh water, and supports plants, animals, and humans alike. So the next time you see a cloud in the sky or puddles on the ground, remember, it's all part of this amazing natural system that keeps our planet alive. This is all about condensation and the water cycle, how water changes form and keeps moving through nature. But before we wrap up, let's quickly recap what we've learned today. Condensation happens when water vapor cools down and turns back into liquid water. This is how clouds form in the atmosphere. When the droplets in clouds become too heavy, they fall to earth as precipitation, rain, snow, or hail. The water then collects in rivers, lakes, and oceans, and the cycle begins again with evaporation. The water cycle is a continuous process that recycles Earth's water and supports all living things. Isn't it amazing how one simple cycle connects the sky, land, and life itself? Do you know where the raindrop on your window came from? It might have been part of a river, a cloud, or even a glacier long before it reached you. That's the wonder of the water cycle. Water is always on the move. So the next time you see rain falling or feel water in your hands, remember, you're touching a drop that's been traveling the earth for millions of years. Thanks for watching. We'll meet again soon with another exciting topic.